This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Watch Guys. This week's watch is a 1950s diver recreation that was launched in 2018 by a company at the top of their game. It was highly anticipated at the time and it still is right now. That's right folks, for all of you wanting more affordable watches on this channel, this week's watch is the 39mm perfection of the Tudor Black Bay 58. That's right, this week is a medium priced watch, something that many of us can afford and aspire to. My collection is eclectic, it's varied, it's not all high end stuff, it's not all ridiculous grand complications. Many of my watches are humble tool watches or things that I can actually use and not worry about. And case in point is this Tudor Black Bay 58. Before we get started, as ever, a quick wristwatch check. This week, under my blue jumper, I am wearing my Rolex Milgauss. This has got a white dial, it has orange hour markers, and it's highly polished. I actually think it's one of my favorite Rolexes. I just love that ice white dial and the combination of the orange. I just think it looks amazing. It really, really stands out. It's the perfect size. It fits exactly on my wrist. And although it's a Milgauss and people don't really like Milgausses, I'm a secret Milgauss fan. I went through a bit of a phase where I started collecting them and I have to say this one is my favorite. This week's watch is the Tudor Black Bay 58 and I'm going to take you through a little bit of history about this watch, why I bought it, how I bought it, what I love about it and I'm going to do a full unboxing too. So if that sounds good with you, Let's crack on with the show. First, a little bit of history, not too much on this one. Tudor itself was formed in 1926 by none other than Hans Wilsdorf. Remember him? That's right, the same dude that created Rolex. Tudor was created to offer a more competitively priced watch alongside Rolex. Right from the start, it was always the better value sister brand. Almost everything that you could get with a Rolex but at a fraction of the cost. And in fact, obviously in those early days, they were even in Rolex cases. Even today, Tudors are at least half the price of the equivalent Rolex, with no real loss of quality. But as with so many other brands, Tudor lost its way in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. No one really cared about them. It wasn't until 2012, when the Black Bay range was launched, that Tudor suddenly started rising in the consciousness of watch collectors and they really started nailing it in terms of design and innovation and interest level. I didn't care for Tudor at all, but all of a sudden there was a range of sexy Tudor models that many people just had to have and I was just like it. I've now got five Tudors, all different looking, all serving different purposes, but each with their own distinct character. As you can see here, I've got these fabulous Black Bay Bronze, which is the perfect watch for going on safari. I've got the Harrods Limited Edition, which is uber cool. I've got the Bukhara Special Edition, which again is that mixture of the bronze and the blue NATO strap. And then I've got the GMT, so the equivalent of the Rolex Pepsi, and of course, the Black Bay 58. So when it comes to Tudor, like Jason, I'm a big fan. The Black Bay 58 was launched at Baselworld in 2018 and it was an instant success. People loved it. They loved the retro touches, they loved the modern technology and it suddenly became a highly sought after watch. The Black Bay 58 pays tribute to the 1950s Tudor divers watches and specifically the reference 7924 which was launched in 1958, hence the name Black Bay 58. That original watch was 39 millimeters. It had a 200 meters, 660 feet depth on it, and it was nicknamed the Big Crown. I'll let you guess why. So it is a recreation of sorts. It's designed to blend the historic look and size of those classic dive watches with modern technology and modern techniques. The first characteristic snowflake hands were launched in 1969 and Tudor has brought those into this recreation, which I think enhances it considerably. There's nothing cooler than snowflake hands. Just look at a Tudor Submariner. So this Black Bay 58 is the perfect blend of old and new. You've got the historic size and look of the dial and depths 
uh, but then you've also got modern materials like sapphire crystal and you've got the brand new in-house movement the 5402 built specifically for this watch and now it's time to go through unboxo vision and go through the full unboxing of this fabulous watch right so as you can see a big imposing black square box this is what all tudors come in Inside itself, you can see there, there's the receipt from Goldsmiths to show you exactly when I bought the watch. You can see there I paid £2,600 for this watch, which was the list price at the time. Inside the outer box into the inner box, there's the Tudor symbol, and inside there's the watch itself. Underneath the watch, you've got, uh, wrapped up in an elastic band, there's the uh, extra link that I took out so that it fitted snugly on the wrist. You've also got the sales tags there, you can see in the back, and there's the uh, warranty registration card and you get your guarantee booklet and then the instruction manual itself to tell you how to use it. And there it is, simple, elegant, understated, but a classic era dive watch brought right up to date for the modern generation. So how and why did I buy this watch? Well, it was clear after the furore at Baselworld 2018 that it was gonna be highly prized and indeed it was, it was really hard to get hold of. Typical waiting times are about six to nine months. This is for a Tudor. And didn't it also have the celebrity factor with David Beckham wearing one? Yeah, that didn't help. So they were quite difficult to get hold of. And at the time, I didn't really have a reputable confirmed supplier for Tudors. I tended to get Tudors from all over the place. So I wanted to start a new relationship with Goldsmiths in Southampton. And I met up with a lovely lady there called Rachel, who promised me that she could get me a Black Bay 58. And you know what? She did. I only had to wait, I think, four or five months for this watch. And since then, Rachel has kind of been my go-to for Tudor and to some extent, Omega. Although that one hasn't borne any fruit yet. At the moment, Black Bay 58s, even now, are still trading about five to 800 pounds above list due to their slightly limited supply. As an investment watch, it's not gonna set the world alight, but it's reassuringly more valuable than I paid for it which is always nice. So what do I love about this watch? Why do I find it so interesting? Why is it so wearable on the wrist? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. I'm a massive sucker for recreations, historic, nostalgic models. So the fact that this takes a lot of those elements and then mixes them with modern technology, just like that Breitling 1959 806 Navitimer reissue, I'm all for that. I absolutely love it. You get the best of both worlds. Would I still like an original Tudor Submariner? You bet I would. But this sits perfectly with my other Tudors, and it is pretty cool that it's got a new in-house movement unique for this watch. On the back, it actually says Calibre Manufacturer Tudor, and that highlights that it's an in-house movement. You've got a 70-hour power reserve, which makes it very usable, and also the loom on this thing is extraordinary. Charge it up with a bit of sunlight and this thing goes for days and it's extremely bright in the dark. So it's very, very readable in low light conditions. So it's thinner. It's only 12 millimeters thick. I like the fact that there's a domed crystal on it and that it's also made from sapphire so it's well protected. And I like the fact that there's no date so I don't have to faff around setting a date all the time. I just put it on the wrist and go out. But the real ace up the sleeve of the 58 it's just the quality of the dial. You've got gold on the hour markers, on the bezel itself, and on the hands. And that coupled with the use of black makes it really pop off of that dial. Those snowflake hands with the gold, the gold on the hour markers, that sort of black slash dark gray dial, it all comes together to form an absolutely beautiful watch it's such a pleasure to wear the light catches the gold in all sorts of conditions so it really does stand off the wrist it looks like a high-end rolex from a distance but it i just really do appreciate it the hour markers are not bright white they're sort of ivory with a slight ring of gold around them and then against that sort of dark gray dial it's just honestly it's honestly it's it's lovely it's a lovely looking watch it's just a great size and in a world where watches have been getting bigger and bigger to go back to 39 millimeters is a refreshing change rather than being fancy and ceramic the bezel on this is aluminium and that gives it quite a warm matte texture which again i think adds to that nostalgia factor and makes it feel like an old watch it's actually it's actually pretty tricky to turn even with bare hands i'd hate to think what it's like with gloves 
I also really like the fact that you've got that red triangle at the top there on the bezel, again harking back to the early Tudor divers, but it works really well and just gives a little splash of colour against the black and gold. You can get the Black Bay 58 on the steel bracelet or on a leather strap or NATO strap. For me personally, it's steel all the way because it really does make it feel a lot more substantial. The bracelet feels strong and well engineered. It's got exposed screws on one side for easy adjustment uh, and removal, and it's got sort of like faux rivets uh, around the outside of the rest of the bracelet, which many people don't like. I have to say, I'm not that bothered. Um, I think it looks fine. One thing that does bother me though, is the clasp itself. When you take off the first stage, you've got a little nub of steel there, which makes it look like you should use your finger to pull it off. And if you exert enough force, you probably can, but it's pretty painful to do. It is not a nice action. So I find that I'm actually pinching it on the bracelet itself and pulling it apart that way. The only other thing that I don't really like about this watch is that it's so subtle and understated that it often gets overlooked in the collection and therefore doesn't get as much wrist time as it deserves because this, mark my words ladies and gentlemen, is a phenomenal watch. It's well priced, the quality is superb, it looks sumptuous, you've got an in-house movement, it really does tick all the boxes, this one, and it does deserve to be in the collections of anyone who's a fan of Tudor. So that's the Black Bay 58 on this week's watch. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it interesting. I hope you enjoy the watch. If you go out and buy one, please let me know. I'll be really interested. If you like what we're doing here on the watchguys.tv, please subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button and then click and turn on all of your notifications. We've got the watchguys.tv website coming live soon. And also please visit us on Instagram at watchguys.tv. And there'll be another Watch Guys episode along next Sunday, same time.